Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And today we're digging into a study that asks a simple yet important question. If elite athletes are instructed to gain a small amount of weight each week, does structured nutrition counseling actually help them achieve better increases in lean mass and performance than athletes who just try and eat more without any guidance? The researchers compared these two approaches head to head and the results are surprisingly clear. Now, if you've been around the channel for a while, you've probably heard me talk about energy availability different fueling strategies and the challenges many athletes face when it comes to maintaining lean mass during heavy training blocks. Well, the paper we're reviewing today dives directly into these issues. It examines whether increasing energy intake and specifically helping athletes move towards a state of positive energy balance can produce measurable improvements in lean body mass and performance over a 10 week period. So today we'll break down the rationale, walk through what the researchers actually did, go through the findings, and then talk about what this means for athletes, coaches, and anybody trying to optimize training through nutrition. So let's dive into it. The authors begin by highlighting a surprisingly common issue in high level sports. And that is that many elite athletes have a difficult time gaining weight. Even though training demands are extremely high, it's not unusual for athletes to fall short of their energy intake required to recover properly and to support muscle mass. The authors point out that the reason for this might be the practical challenge related to increased energy intake, fear of gaining excess body fat and or more simply just a basic lack of knowledge. Now, because lean mass plays a central role in strength, power and overall performance, improving energy intake and achieving an appropriate positive energy balance may directly support performance outcomes. Now, although nutritional interventions are recommended to correct low energy intake, the evidence showing whether these interventions actually lead to measurable changes in lean mass or performance is actually quite limited in elite athletes. The observed gap in the literature motivated the current study, which specifically tested whether a short targeted intervention could help elite athletes increase energy intake and translate that into gains in lean body mass and performance. To do this, the authors implemented an eight to 10 week intervention that compared the two approaches Approaches, a nutrition counseling group that received individualized dietitian led coaching and an ad libitum group that was instructed to increase intake on their own. Importantly, both groups were given the same quantitative target, which was a calorie surplus designed to produce about a 0.07% increase in body mass per week. So the study could determine whether the methods of implementing the surplus through either structured counseling or unguided increase affected dietary adherence, body composition changes and performance outcomes outcomes. Now for someone of my current body weight, which is around 135 pounds, that would equate to approximately 0.94 of a pound gain per week. This was an eight to 10 week intervention involving elite athletes who continued their regular sport specific training throughout the study. In addition, all athletes performed an additional four resistance training sessions per week. Athletes were randomly assigned into one of the two groups, the nutrition counseling group or the ad libitum group. Both groups were instructed to eat in a calorie surplus with the goal I mentioned earlier of gaining approximately 0.7% of their total body weight per week, which the researchers considered an optimal rate for promoting increases in lean mass. Athletes in the nutrition counseling group received individualized guidance from sports dietitians. This included structured one-on-one -on -one sessions, personalized meal planning support, education on energy and macronutrient needs, and ongoing monitoring to help them progressively increase their intake. In contrast, athletes in the ad libitum group were simply advised to increase their calorie intake to achieve the same rate of weekly gain, but did not receive individualized instruction or ongoing counseling. Dietary intake was tracked throughout the study using repeated 24 hour recalls conducted by trained staff. Body composition was measured via DEXA both before and after the intervention. During the 10 week intervention, all athletes completed a structured high volume training program layered on top of their usual sport specific training. The study was intentionally scheduled during the off season. So additional strength work wouldn't interfere with the competition demands. Both groups had similar prior resistance training experience, averaging around four hours of strength work per week in the past year, and they maintained their normal sport training load of roughly 17 hours per week. The program was periodized over a 10 week period, progressing from three sets of eight to 12 rep max in the first block to four sets of six to 12 rep max in the middle block, and finally five sets of six to 10 reps in the final block. 
Athletes increased the load whenever they exceeded their prescribed rep ranges and rest periods ranged from one to three minutes depending on the exercise. Performance testing included assessments of the 40 meter sprint time, counter movement jump height, and one rep maximum in bench press, pull-ups, and squats. Again, the intent here was to determine whether structured counseling led to greater increases in calorie intake and whether those increases translated into superior gains in lean mass and improved athletic performance compared to the ad libitum approach. So let's take a look at the results. What did they find? Well, across the 10 week intervention, both groups completed virtually the same amount of time in the study with no major differences in baseline characteristics other than slightly higher fat mass in the ad libitum group. Now the nutrition counseling group successfully increased their total energy intake relative to baseline, while the ad libitum group, despite being given the same weight gain goal, did not meaningfully increase their energy intake over the intervention. As a result, the nutrition counseling group consumed more daily calories with the exception of protein percentage and fat intake per kilogram of body weight. Basically, both groups ate the same amount of protein and fat. Now, these differences in intake were reflected in body weight changes. The nutrition counseling group gained significantly more total body body weight than the ad libitum group. Fat mass, however, also increased more in the nutrition counseling group. Total lean body mass increased over the intervention, about 2.8% in the nutrition counseling group and 1.9% in the ad libitum group. However, these differences were not statistically significant when comparing groups. Now, when lean mass was separated out by region, the nutrition counseling group did show significantly greater increases in leg lean mass compared with the ad libitum group, while the upper body lean mass changes were similar between both groups. When it comes to performance, the results were quite mixed. There were no meaningful changes in the counter movement jump performance in either group. The nutrition counseling group experienced a small statistically significant decline in their 40 meter sprint performance, whereas the ad libitum group did not change. When it comes to strength, this increased in both groups across all measured lifts by roughly six to 12% with no significant differences between the two groups. So what does this all mean? You might be wondering. Well, these findings suggest that structured nutrition counseling can successfully increase total energy intake in elite athletes, whereas simply instructing athletes to eat more on their own might not produce the intended dietary changes. This increase in intake translated to greater total body weight gain in the nutrition counseling group, including larger increases in fat mass and a modest but consistent increase in lean mass, similar to the ad libitum group. The lack of a statistically significant difference in total lean mass between groups likely reflects both the relatively short duration of the intervention, especially given how slow muscle grows, and the large degree of variability seen in the ad libitum group, where one athlete experienced unusually high lean mass gains compared with the rest of the group. The greater increase in leg lean mass in the nutrition counseling group may be notable, given the lower body training volume included in the program and the role of adequate energy intake in supporting adaptation to strength training. However, because because total lean body mass was not statistically different between the two groups, this should be interpreted cautiously. The performance adaptations largely reflected ongoing training rather than the nutrition intervention itself. Strength increased similarly in both groups, counter movement jump performance did not improve, and sprint performance slightly decreased in the nutrition counseling group. These mixed results emphasize that short-term nutritional changes may influence body composition before producing measurable effects on sport-specific performance. And and finally, I would be extremely curious to see what muscle growth would have looked like in this study if the authors had taken a direct measurement of muscle size using either B-mode ultrasound or tools such as CT or MRI, which we know are far more accurate than DEXA, which I have covered previously on this channel. Specifically, would the additional resistance training result in muscle growth despite poor adherence to the energy intake in the ad lib group? And moreover, would some of these reported differences go away? Conversely, would the nutrition count counseling prove even more important? I think these are all interesting questions that we should be asking, but that's another study for another day. So to summarize my thoughts, individualized nutrition counseling effectively increased energy intake and produced greater total body weight gain over a 10 week training period. Whereas athletes instructed to self-manage their intake did not achieve meaningful increases in calories despite having the same goals. Both groups increased lean body mass, though the difference between the groups was not significant and only leg lean mass increased to a significant significantly greater extent in the nutrition counseling condition. So for any practitioners watching, the takeaway here is that structured individual
specialized nutrition support can reliably improve fueling behaviors, but measurable differences in lean mass or performance likely require either longer interventions, stricter adherence, or a different nutrition or training strategies. Even in elite athletes, increasing intake is not guaranteed without guided support. And even when intake increases, the time window may be too short to produce large detectable changes in performance, especially with the use of indirect methods to assess lean mass, such as the DEXA. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video breakdown and want more research-based content on sports nutrition and performance, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.